In this video, I want to show you how to find the mean and the standard deviation of a discrete random variable. Uh, first off, let me show you, though, and point out to you. So x here is just going to represent a random variable. In this case, the random variables are 4, 5, 6, and 7. And these guys are considered discrete because um, if you graph them on a number line, they would just look like a solid dot, and that's it. Um, there's no decimal attached to it, you know, there's no 4.398 or anything like that. These are integer values. So these are discrete random variables. These are the probabilities, right, the p of x. This is the probability that we attain each of these random variables. So the probability that we get a 4 is 5% or 0.05. The probability that we get a 5 is 25% or 0.25, etc., etc. Now, before you tackle any of these problems, um, a good thing to make sure and to verify is that the sum of all of these probabilities does equal 1. Uh, before we even do that, probably, you should just look at each of these probabilities and make sure that they're all between 0 and 1 inclusive. All right, so any of these could be a 0, or any of these could be a 1. But you can't have anything greater than 1 as far as the probability is concerned, and you can't have anything less than 0. You can't have a negative probability. And so they all meet that criteria. But again, the, if you were to add up all of these probabilities here, they should equal 1. Um, because if they don't, then just stop right there. You can't even do the problem. But sure, look, 0.05 added to 25, or 0.25, is 0.30. So 0.30 added to 30 is 0.60, and 0.60 added to 0.40 is certainly 1. OK, so now that we've verified that, here is the formula to find the probability, to find the mean, rather, of a discrete random variable. Right? This is probably shown somewhere in your book, um, or your professor has shown it to you in class, or maybe uh, it's on a formula sheet somewhere that you might have. So this is the formula to find the mean of a discrete random variable. And the way this works is you take each x value, each random variable, multiply it by its probability. All right, so we're going to do that for each x and its probability. And then when we're all done and we come up with that product, we're going to add, that's what that summation means, that capital sigma, means we're going to add up all of those products. And that gives us the mean of the random variables x. All right, so here it goes. I'm going to use this formula to find the mean. All right, so let's see here. Grab a different marker. So in this column, I'm going to take all of my x's and multiply it by its probabilities. Now, I'm doing all of this out by hand in this video. Um, I'm going to make a separate video. There will be a separate video on my YouTube channel um, that shows you how to do this exact same thing on Excel. Um, and using technology like a calculator or Excel will be a lot easier um, if we had a lot more random variables. We only have four random variables here, but if there were 14 of them or more, there's no way you should probably do this out by hand. All right? Using technology would be a lot easier. OK, speaking of technology, we're going to need some. So I've got my trusty calculator here. And what we're going to do is we're going to simply um, work on the products of each of these. So the first go around here, we're going to take 4 and multiply it by its probability of 0.05. And we get a product here of 0.20. All right, we're going to go all the, way, all the way down here. So we're going to do 5 times 0.25 and 6 times 0.30. All right, we'll do all that out real quick here. 5 times 0.25 gives us a 1.25. Um, if you work out the rest, you'll see that you get 1.8. And 7 times 0.4 is 2.8. Right. And the last part of this product, OK, so we, we, did, all right, we did the product of each of these here, the product of each of them. The last part of this formula says I have to sum them all up. All right, so if I add up all of these products, I've got the mean. OK, so we're just going to add up this whole column here, and we're going to get our mean value. And let's see if we do this correctly. I think it comes out to 6.05. Yeah, so 6.05. This is, this value right here, is the mean of our random variables. OK, rounded to two decimal places, or come, uh, worked out to two decimal places total. All right, so that's our mean. And uh, we need to find the mean of 
discrete random variables before we apply this second formula to find the standard deviation. All right. Do you notice that in this formula here, here's the mean. All right. We could also use, I have an or here, or we could use this formula to find the standard deviation. Either one works, but notice that both of these involve using the mean. All right. So we first had to find we first had to find the mean of the discrete random variables before we apply uh, the standard deviation formula because we need it. Now I recommend, if you're doing this out by hand, I recommend that you use this bottom formula here to find the standard deviation of random variables. And the reason being is because, do you see that in this formula here, in this version, this bottom one here, it uses, it requires that you use the mean just once. All right, we're going to do some stuff, blah, 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 minus the mean squared. So we're only going to do that once. It's not part of the summation. All right, so over here, we have to, if you use this formula, you have to take x minus the mean for every single random variable. All right, once you find that difference, then you have to square it. And then once you find that product, you have to multiply it times the probability of x. And then you have to sum all of those values up and then take the square root as the last step. But um, that's a lot of work right there. That's a lot of, that's, that's too much work. In fact, every single uh, step of this problem here involves using the mean. Um, but whereas here, this, this formula, um, which will give you the same result, by the way, right? this bottom one gives you the same as exact result as the top one. But it does not, in the summation here, it does not use the mean at all. Um, we have to take every x, square it, that's going to be simple, multiply it by its probability, right? and then once we have that product, we're going to sum all of those numbers up, and then we're going to subtract just once, all right? we're going to subtract the mean value squared. Whatever the mean is squared, we're going to figure that out. All right, so here goes, enough delay, let's, let's work on this problem. All right, so I'm using this bottom formula. The bottom formula says first square every x, right? that's what that says, square every x. All right, we can do that. Might have to, might run out of room here. That's right. We'll see if we can squeeze it on this sheet. Okay. So I'm going to square every x. Well, four squared is 16. Five squared is 25. Six squared is 36. And seven squared is 49. Okay. All right. The next part of the formula says, okay, take all those x's that you just squared and multiply it by the probability of x. All right. So x squared times p of x. In other words x squared times p of x. All right, so in other words, they want us to take this number here, this x columns, uh, x squared column rather, and multiply it by the probability. The probability for, uh, for x is 0.05. So we're going to multiply 16 times 0.05, 25 times 0.25, 36 times 0.30, 49 times. So we're going to do that for every single one of these. All right, I can bring my calculator up here. Pop it up a little bit higher so you can see what I'm doing here. All right, so I'm going to multiply 0 0.05 times this 16, the, the value squared, and I get 0 0.8. All right, I'm going to keep going here. Let's, let's multiply this x squared, which is 25, times its probability of 0 0.25, and we get 6.25. Let me speed this up a little bit here. So I've got 36 times 0.3 of 10.80, and I've got 49 times 0.4, and I come up with a value of 19.6, or 19.60 if you want. Okay, referring back to the formula now, I've got this product. We're going to sum all of those up. Right? So we're going to add up this whole row, this whole column rather. So add up all of these values here. I'm going to add it to 10.8. 6.25, and that top guy, 0.8. And so we come up with a number of 37.45. Now, that's not our answer. What I have to do next is, now that I've got this sum, I have to subtract from this number, right, from this number here. I'm going to subtract from this number the mean squared. OK, well, I have the mean, 6.05, but I don't have the mean squared. That means I have to take my 6.05, and I have to square that which is 36.6025. Now, let me point something out to you. All right? I got 36.25, uh, 
36.6025 on my calculator. I am not going to round any of those numbers. Right? I'm going to leave them as they are. None of these values that I've come up with so far are rounded. None of them. I'm not going to round until the very, very end. All right. So I'm almost done. I have to do two more things. I have to take this number that I found, with this 37.45, subtract my mean squared. I've got that now. That's 36 point blah, blah, blah. All right, so let's do that. And then one more thing is I'm going to square root that answer that I've got. All right, so I've got my 37.45. I'm going to, I'm subtracting these two now. I hope you see I've got 37.45 minus, you can't see that here. All right, so minus 36.6025. So I'm just doing this on my calculator. 36.6025. And I've come up with the number. That's still not my answer. 8475 is still not my answer. I have to do one more thing to that 0.8475. I have to square root that big thing. All right, so square root of this thing, square root of my answer is final answer here. All right, I square rooted all this, and I've got a final answer for my standard deviation of. 0.92, right, and my calculator goes on. I want you to see that. Do you see my calculator shows 0 0.92059, blah, 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 blah. So depending on maybe my math lab or your instructor or whatever the instructions are for this problem, it might say round to the nearest tenth, which would be 0 0.9, or the nearest hundredth, which would be 0 0.92, or it might even say round it to three decimal places, the nearest thousandth. And if that's the case, then that 5 changes that 0 into a 1, so it would be 0.921. In fact, I'm going to do that. I'm going to round it out to three decimal places, all right, 0.921. So round it accordingly, uh, depending on what the instructions are. So that's how you find the mean and the standard deviation. I know it's a lot of work out by hand um, for a random variable. So look on my uh, channel here. I'm going to show you a different way to do this um, using Microsoft Excel. Hope that helps.